Mm-hmm. I want to read it to you. I want to quote what you said, and then I'd love to have you respond to it or expand on it, yeah, yeah. whatever you feel like. You said this, <clears throat> while, while I'm not one to dance the hula, I would like to think of my movement as my spirit dance, my art and my method of physical storytelling. I'm a firm believer that your movement practice expresses your innermost being and can become a method of interaction between the internal and the external. Yeah. I found that really profound and perhaps it speaks to, to your journey. Perhaps it speaks to, to what the things you were just saying. Of course, obviously some of that might relate to being barefoot. Tell me more, expand on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, where to begin? Um, (laughs) <laughs> I could, I could really go into this, but, um, yeah, I think ultimately the hope is that, you know, okay. I believe in, I believe in the, in the soul and the spirit that is within you and, and that, I don't want to call it a thing, but, but your spirit is trying to express itself to its truest form. And we're only given um, so many things to, to do that with, um, on earth, you know? And I think, uh, you know, and the hope is that, you know, people are able to find ways to express themselves as close to their truest form that they possibly can. For me personally, I think parkour is the closest thing that you can experience, like just maybe like, um, dancing or cop water basically like the le- the least amount of things that you use to express yourself i feel like that's coming closer to your soul expressing itself and that's why that's another reason why i think doing parkour just in general is amazing because you it's just your body and your shoes for most practitioners and then me taking my shoes off is stepping into myself even more because i'm not limited to that external apparatus <laughs> that for tool or something. And it's like, you know, um, it's interesting that some of the greatest forms of expression nowadays are mainstream sports. And it's it's it it's interesting because it's like the potential of the human body is only expressed to a certain degree. And it is reliant on external things like I don't want to like bash on other sports. I'm okay. I'm just going to bash on football. But, <laughs> um, um, uh, you know, football player, big dude, prob- probably a big dude, um, has a ball, has to play in a field, you know, and they're running, they're throwing the ball. They're like taking hits and that's really it. But you take the ball away, you take the court away. Like, what do you have? This is a big dude then, but what can he do? Maybe run. Um, and so your identity is, is placed within the, the ball, within the, the field. I feel like more so than the person. So if I look at a football player, it's like, well, yeah, they're their person, but they're actually, they're more a ball and a field because without those two things, what can they do? <laughs> Um, so I'm very like intrigued by movement disciplines where you're only using your body, like just dance, capoeira, course parkour. Um, yeah, because the expression you're expressing yourself in a, in a purer form without the need for, you know, abstract external things. And I've had this conversation with different people and like, oh, well, what is a parkour athlete without walls in an urban environment? And you're like, oh yeah, you're right. I guess we'd just be like a runner um, or like a climber. But, you know, there's trees and there's rocks and there's fields and there's ocean. There's, you know, rivers you got to traverse and mountains you have to climb. It's like humans do exist in this context. The context is earth. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Yeah. If there wasn't an earth, then parkour doesn't exist. Fine. Yeah. But that's less contrived than like, let's make this elongated football, this elongated ball with this texture and these 
these strings on it that help you hold it. And then let's put on all these pads and let's draw these lines on the ground. The earth is yeah. much less contrived. It's, yeah. it's part of who we are. So yeah. I can totally see your argument. Totally. Yeah. And, and, and I totally get why, you know, mainstream sports are so popular. It's because the mind can comprehend what's going on because there's so many rules and like, uh, limitations to what you can do. It's like, it kind of is what it is, you know, like, oh, the guy crossed the line. Oh, it's not, he's not within bounds. So like whatever it is he did is like, is, is inferior to the game or it's not helping the game. And then people look at parkour. It's like, it's so hard to understand what we're doing. <laughs> so I can see why, you know, why parkour is such a niche um, discipline because there, there's, there's no, there's no balance. There's no limits to what we can do. And people have a hard time understanding that, which is interesting because like, we're all, I believe we're all meant to do parkour in some shape or form, you know? But yeah, I, I love the ideas. You know, I've been thinking about this for a, a couple of years. And what I realized was that the rules that a sport gives allow things to be created. So you'd think it'd be limiting, but in some ways it's empowering. So for example, and then I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to give an example that I'll undermine it in a second, but kind of the, to steel man, the sport argument, because you have a football field and because it's a hundred yards long and because there's four quarters that are 15 minutes and because you only have four downs, it then forces creativity to happen within these bounds and then amazing things happen. So you get a Tom Brady with a winning drive or whatever it may be, but when I was when I was a first in Nepal where I thought about athletics from your perspective as well. Yeah. And my theory was that how good of an athlete are you if you're dependent on these other elements? Like you've just said, if you're dependent on the pads and the lines on the ground and a ball. For me, I grew up playing basketball. So I was like, all right, the goal is to get this ball and put it through a metal hoop rim. Like, is what does that really mean? You know, and, and, and it allows for the expression of athleticism but are those people as athletic as people who don't need that? So I thought about it and I said, like, what are the pure sports? What are the sports that you don't need anything? And it was like, all right, running, swimming, wrestling, parkour. That's what I came up with. Maybe climbing as well. It's like the things where it's just you and there's something different. There's a, there's a different quality to those sports because they don't have the same limits. And my argument was that the best athletes of all time aren't Michael Jordan, Babe Ruth, Wayne Gretzky, although Michael Jordan was my idol growing up. My argument was the greatest athletes ever were Bruce Lee, Raymond Bell, David Bell, and then, I don't know, Steve Prefontaine or someone like that. You know, that was kind of my vision. And and so there's there's two arguments, but I totally, totally, totally vibe with your idea. And I think you're, the way you're expressing it is pretty profound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what do I know? I'm just one human being. Right. Well, you know, just... <laughs> we just all human beings trying to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Would you at all be interested in talking about uh, your faith at all? You have a Joshua one nine is quoted in your Instagram, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, would you care at all to talk about that? And maybe to add to that, you said in a post that from 2016 to 2019, you were doing Christian nonprofit work involving parkour in Europe. So maybe there's a good parkour tie in there as well. Can you tell us about your faith, what it means to you and anything relating to that and, and maybe parkour as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, where to begin? <clears throat> where to begin? I think everyone is, I'm just going to think a lot. I think everyone is on a, on a journey to discovering, um, themselves and trying to better yourselves but then you, you get to a point where like you can only achieve so much within this lifetime and so and uh, even with parkour it's like oh you know i'm trying to become the best version of myself that i can be but truly at the end of the day you will never actually be able to do that because you will die <laughs> so then it, it begs you to ask the question oh what if there was a possibility of continuing <clears throat> that self-development path of death <laughs> 